This is a Fox 5 News special. Veterans Voices, honoring those who serve. Veterans Voices, once again honoring those who serve by sharing stories from brave Americans who have put their nation ahead of themselves. Hello, I'm Kathleen Bade, and this is Veterans Voices Honoring Those Who Serve. Over the next 30 minutes, you'll hear from veterans from across the generations about their time serving our country and the impact they've had here at home. Starting with a one-of-a-kind tribute in San Diego, the giant white cross standing atop the Mount Soledad National Veterans Memorial has served as a beacon of freedom for nearly 70 years. Now, tens of thousands of people visit every year to see the walls that surround it, each one telling stories of service and sacrifice, an open book of legacies that's growing to this day. Perched on one of San Diego's most scenic vantage points lies the Mount Soledad National Veterans Memorial, a memorial unlike any other. These walls with pictures of husbands and wives or brothers or service members, there is no other memorial in the country that does this. More than 5,000 black granite plaques line the walls, each one sharing a unique story of courage and sacrifice. Every rank from every service, from the Revolutionary War to the present day, and there is no special wall set aside for rank or service or any point in time in history. Service is the centerpiece of the memorial. Anyone, no matter where they're from, who was honorably discharged can have a plaque here. And it's that all embracing mosaic of service that's now growing even larger. The memorial is building more walls to honor and preserve the legacies of thousands more service members. Five new walls, which will provide us 2,000 more plaque spaces. A part of that expansion is building on their existing website, soledadmemorial.org, and creating an app where people can find the face they're looking for and the story behind their sacrifice from anywhere in the world. But if you do step foot here, you're in good hands. We're supported by a team of 24 docents who take a watch up here and engage with the public, keep the memorial clean, and tell the stories of these veterans that are on these, these walls. They have a syllabus to study the remarkable military history remembered here, like Major Megan McClung, the first female Marine Corps officer killed in Iraq. I often actually imagine her talking to, to me, to us, to our group, and I can hear her voice even to this day. Combat photojournalist Amy Forsyth served alongside Megan, even training with her at Camp Pendleton before deployment. As the first female Marine officer to be killed in Iraq, that was significant and it got people's attention. The Mount Soledad Memorial doing its part to keep Megan's memory alive, dedicating their Memorial Day ceremony to her this past May. Well, I can't thank the organization enough for making her uh, the centerpiece and especially being a woman and honoring that sacrifice because oftentimes those heroes, those combat infantry, Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, they're the ones with the glory, but oftentimes it's the people in the background who also risked everything. Megan is remembered as an all-American girl who made the ultimate sacrifice, like so many of the heroes honored alongside her. Her mantra was, be bold, be brief, be gone, and that's the way she lived her life. A life along with the thousands honored here, worthy of such heights, standing tall for eternity from dusk until dawn. The memorial relies solely on donations from the community to continue honoring those legacies. If you would like to help, head to fox5sandiego.com and click on the Veterans Voices tab or visit soledadmemorial.org. A veteran is leading the charge to help repair a damaged memorial in San Diego. The 52 Boats Memorial is located at NTC Park in Liberty Station. It is meant to honor the men who served on the 52 submarines that never came home during World War II. In the 12 years since the 52 black granite monuments were put in place, they've been damaged by vandalism, the sun, and time. 
The company that made the monuments filed for bankruptcy right after finishing them in 2010, and the company set to repair them didn't survive the pandemic. Now veteran and founder of the 52 Boats Memorial, Douglas Smay, is looking for help to replace them. There are no uh, burial sites for these men. They're still in their submarine on the bottom of the ocean. These monuments memorialize their service to the country. Our, our, our total objective here is to maintain this memorial. And we recognize you have a job to do. We're ready to do that job. We just need outside help. Smay believes it will cost about $2,300 to replace each monument. Every year, thousands of veterans are given the opportunity to take an honor flight to the nation's capital. The trips are part of a program to thank veterans and give them the opportunity to see the memorials dedicated to their service. This year, those trips included Vietnam veterans for the first time ever. Here they come. This was the scene at San Diego International Airport this September as 85 Vietnam veterans returned home from D.C. Nearly 2,000 people gathered to greet them. Ken Wayne accompanied dozens of veterans from the Bay Area as they also took an honor flight, many of whom never had the opportunity to be recognized for their service. The flight arrived at Reagan National Airport and the veterans got quite the surprise when they stepped off the plane. The rest of the weekend was a whirlwind of visits to memorials and museums. The Army Museum featured a riveting segment on Vietnam, the war most of these vets were involved in. At the World War II Memorial, a native of San Francisco's Chinatown explained why he enlisted at the age of 18. Somebody got to bring the soldiers back home and who's going to replace them? So I said, well, it's my, my duty right to go in and have them come back home to see their family. So do my part in releasing them. You know? During a lunch stop at the Navy Memorial, the vets were given yet another surprise, a performance by the Marine Corps silent drill team known as the Marching 24. The names of fallen comrades were copied from the Vietnam Wall and tokens left behind in their memory. Four Bay Area veterans had the honor of presenting a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington Cemetery. The last night featured one of every soldier's favorite military memories, mail call. Only in this case, the letters were from loved ones today, thanking their veteran for their service. What a gift. What a gift. Another surprise after the veterans arrived behind schedule at SFO. The plane was delayed by two hours, yet a large crowd remained to give many of these vets the welcome home they never got when they returned from Vietnam. In San Francisco, Ken Wayne reporting. Still ahead on Veterans Voices, an Air Force veteran uncovers another way to cope with trauma. When you're sitting in the emotions all day, every day, how do you function? You can't, not effectively. How she's helping her fellow veterans heal with a new form of therapy. Plus, it's a moment more than two years in the making. The story behind a reunion on the flight deck of the USS Midway Museum and changing the lives of veterans one home at a time. You'll hear from a Marine Corps veteran who has a new place to live thanks to actor Gary Sinise and his foundation. Veterans Voices will return in a moment.
now return to Veterans Voices, honoring those who serve. Veterans wear the uniform to serve our country, but their service doesn't have to stop when they leave the military. An Air Force veteran is proving that to be true by helping her fellow veterans through some of the most traumatic events of their lives. Maria Elena Belores explains. When you're sitting in the emotions all day, every day, how do you function? You can't, not effectively. That was the lesson about trauma Dr. Janelle Royster learned while serving in the Air Force. One of the things I was struggling with was um, shame and guilt from my best friend's um, suicide. She was a veteran and I wasn't allowed to go to her funeral because I had to be back to my permanent duty station because I was still active duty Air Force. She saw many doctors who diagnosed her with complex PTSD and gave her a variety of medications. They didn't work and she realized something had to change. I figured doctor heal thyself, right? Go back to school, get your master's in mental health counseling. She's now developed a new way to process trauma called the Trauma Recovery Intervention Protocol, or TRIP. So what we do is we go before the trauma ever happened. What were you doing where you were safe before this event happened? What were you doing when you were safe after? Unlike many traditional forms of therapy, TRIP doesn't ask veterans to revisit every single traumatic event they've ever experienced. It wasn't doing anything for me to have to relive those events over and over because to, to me it was almost, it was keeping me in a state of trauma. And that change made all the difference for Michael Murray, who's a retired Marine infantry officer and was medevaced out of Afghanistan in 2012. After the hour, about an hour and a half I spent with Dr. Royster, so many things changed. Murray founded a nonprofit, Liberty OVE, to help veterans and first responders. And now he and Royster are working together to spread trip across the country. A traumatic event happens within seconds. Why can't you solve the problem within minutes? Their mission is to help people cope with trauma and lower the veteran suicide rate through talking and training. If you need help coping with trauma or if you want to sponsor training for other veterans to go through the protocol, visit libertyove.com. In Norfolk, I'm Maria Elena Belores. The COVID-19 pandemic disrupted everyone's lives in different ways. But for those who served aboard the USS Midway, it meant they couldn't reunite for two years. That all changed this September when the museum welcomed back dozens of members of the USS Midway Veterans Association. Each one served on the iconic San Diego landmark during its time in service. It's estimated around 225,000 people were deployed on the ship while it was commissioned. It's different emotions for different people, but basically everybody here, everybody here has a real feel for the ship, uh, has a feel for the camaraderie of the staff or of, the, of our shipmates. Uh, and it, it doesn't matter if you were, uh, if you were a seaman recruit or a, a four-star admiral, uh, you, were, you basically would be treated the same uh, in, the, in a veterans organization. The association is open to sailors and Marines who served aboard the USS Midway from 1945 to 1992. Actor Gary Sinise has made it his mission to help veterans and first responders. And this year he was honored at the USS Midway Museum's annual American Patriot Award Gala. It's really a privilege to, to be able to be here with this team and to, to receive this award. The Gary Sinise Foundation uh, does all kinds of things. We have a, a, a tremendous list of programs. We're involved in all kinds of initiatives and events and, and uh, educational uh, programs. So money that we raise at the Gary Sinise Foundation is something that, uh, that uh, helps us to do a lot of good things. The Gary Sinise Foundation has built more than 70 homes for veterans in the last decade, including one for a Marine Corps veteran in Vista this year. Staff Sergeant Stuart DePaulo, who was deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq, broke every bone in his face during a training exercise at Camp Pendleton. His left arm and leg were also paralyzed. I just can't believe how incredibly awesome the whole foundation is and everybody in the surrounding area that have donated materials and their time to making this happen. It's just incredible and I cannot thank them enough. Staff Sergeant Apollo and his family moved into their new home in July.
still to come on Veterans Voices, from serving overseas to serving at the very heart of our democracy. How a Marine Corps veteran is teaming up with a four-legged partner to protect our nation's capital. Plus. But he's the kind of guy that this nation needs nowadays, and, and it's definitely, you know, it's gonna be hard to you know, fill the space that he, that he created. Honoring a life of service, we'll introduce you to a Naval commander who continued giving back after leaving the military. Veterans Voices will return in a moment. to Veterans Voices, honoring those who serve. A Marine Corps veteran continues to serve his country at the very heart of our democracy. Sean Haynes now patrols the U.S. Capitol grounds with a special four-legged partner. Anna Wernicke takes us to the nation's capital. He is my partner. His name is Lord. Former U.S. Marine Sean Haynes joined the Capitol Police Force 33 years ago. Lord is his fifth four-legged partner. My third dog, his name was uh, Hawk. He was a Dutch Shepherd. He was single purpose, explosive detection. Uh, my fourth dog was a black Labrador retriever named Will, uh, single purpose, and um, now I have Lord. Haynes teamed up with Lord in 2018. They are one of 56 canine crews that patrol and protect the grounds of the U.S. Capitol and the lawmakers inside. The K-9 unit is a select team within the U.S. Capitol Police Department. Each dog is paired with a technician and together they go through an extensive training program before they report here to the Capitol. It's the best job on the department. Haynes is one of the longest serving technicians in the K-9 unit, a role he says the Marines prepared him for. I'm very disciplined. Um, I'm never late for work. <laughs> I'm always an hour early, you know, every day since I've been here. In 2019, Haynes and his partner were honored by the department for finding and catching a suspect accused of killing a 15-year-old boy. But his most unforgettable moment as an officer happened 21 years ago. On September 11th, Haynes and his partner Fanto were on duty when three hijacked planes crashed into the Twin Towers and Pentagon. A couple of canine teams were sent out to the Pentagon to um, provide explosive detection capabilities during the recovery effort at, uh, at the Pentagon. So I get a little you know, teared up about this sometimes. Yeah, because that's, that's all a lot, so. Yeah. Haynes says he's not sure when he will retire, but he knows that when he does, Lord will retire too. For Veterans Voices, I'm Anna Warnicke. Now we'd like to take a moment to honor a naval commander who passed away this summer. Commander Norbert Lee Bosch served as a pilot in the Navy for three decades, serving in the Korean and Vietnam Wars. After his military retirement, Commander Bosch spent the rest of his life in San Diego and served as a senior volunteer with the police. He also spent eight years on the San Diego Citizens Law Enforcement Review Board. Bosch was laid to rest at the Miramar National Cemetery in September. He was 95 years old. We'd also like to recognize our own Liberty Zavala, who was formally commissioned into the U.S. Navy Reserve in August. The ceremony was held aboard the USS Midway Museum with her family and friends supporting her and cheering her on. And we could not be more proud. Liberty will serve in the Navy Reserve as a public affairs officer working to tell the Navy's story. Still ahead, packing with a purpose. How volunteers are working year round to brighten the holiday season for our troops. Voices will return in a moment.
now return to Veterans Voices, honoring those who serve. A nonprofit is working year round to make sure our troops overseas can enjoy the holiday season. Ken Watlington shows us how they are supporting those currently serving one care package at a time. On the outside, it looks like your basic strip mall. Just one. But there's plenty of hustle and bustle inside one of the units. This is where the magic happens for Aiden, North Carolina-based NC Packs for Patriots. We call this the southern branch of the North Pole. That's because they're packing with a purpose. We are preparing Christmas for troops who are away from their families and friends and homes for Christmas. So we try to send a little touch and taste of the holidays to our troops who are serving away. Barbara Whitehead started NC Packs for Patriots back in 2004. People don't realize you're standing within a two hour drive of the largest bases for all five branches of the military. The nonprofit first collects donations from businesses, churches, and individuals from across Eastern North Carolina. Then volunteers pack those donations to send to service members around the world. From the time that uh, I've been overseas myself to have these care packages come in, um, it makes it a little bit easier to be away from family, especially during the holidays. And what makes NC Packs for Patriots even more remarkable is that everything you see in this facility is donated, and that includes what goes into the care packages like the toiletries or maybe some snacks for the troops. But the most important donation is monetary. They need money to pay for the postage to send out these care packages. Our Christmas packages alone probably will be about $8,000. And that's just a one month, four week period. And people are donating their time too. Volunteers like Judy Dobler. Even a small group of two people make a difference. We've been coming to NC PACs to help for the, about the last eight years. Besides supporting the troops, there's another reason Judy says she keeps coming back, and that's Barbara. She's just one of a kind. Um, we said we, she should write a book with what she's been doing because it's so meaningful to so many people. Still making a difference nearly two decades later. Just thank you so much. <laughs> the mission continues, so it's not just about Christmas in here because we have troops who are deploying and they're always in my heart. For Veterans Voices, I'm Ken Watlington in Aden, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us once again as we share these important stories. We send our sincerest gratitude to all who have and still do serve our nation. You can find these stories and much more on our website. For Veterans Voices, I'm Kathleen Bade.